Our final lesson from God's Word and the lesson for our sermon on this Ascension Day is from the last book of the Bible, from Revelation chapter 19. Here we have a vision that the Apostle John saw of Jesus. And this is what Jesus looked like. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is God's word. The friends of Jesus, Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's the message of Ascension Day. Jesus ascended into heaven to take his throne as the King over the universe. There is nothing in the whole world that is outside of Jesus' control. I find myself telling people that all the time. Jesus is in control. How often do you say that in your own life? Jesus is in control. So why are you still so worried? Why do I still get so anxious? Jesus is in control, right? Truth is, those are some of the easiest words in the world to say. Jesus is in control. But they're some of the hardest words in the world to actually believe. Jesus is in control. Because it sure doesn't look that way. Past week, 21 more people were killed at an elementary school. It's such evil. And the sad thing is we're not even surprised because it happens all the time. Violence and murder and abuse. Jesus is in control. The world is so evil. God has so many enemies. I once watched a, a short YouTube video mocking creation. There's a little video making fun of people who believe in creation. And the day that I watched it, do you know how many people had watched that video? Two million people. I put a sermon on Facebook and like eight people watched it. Right? But two million people had watched this short video and 50,000 people had liked it. And underneath it were all these comments. And there were things like, it takes a special brand of crazy to be a Christian. Or it should be considered child abuse to teach children about creation. Or, hey, you brainwashed people, when are you going to get with the 21st century? An insult after insult. When you hear that, how does it make you feel? For me, angry and afraid. Why doesn't God do something about it? Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Really, God? Don't you see what they're saying? Don't you see what they're doing? You walk into Target. Target right here in Tulsa. And right there at the entrance is a big stand with shirts with all sorts of different pronouns on them. Have you seen those? Right here at Target. Right inside the entrance. Because you get to pick your pronoun. Right? When we lived in, in Minnesota, the governor of Minnesota during our time there actually said that if anybody believes that God determines a person's gender at birth, that person is on the wrong side of morality and holds an extreme position. Got that if, if somebody believes that God has the right to determine if someone is a man or woman when they're born, that person is immoral and extreme. 
That's you, I think. It's hard for us to take, isn't it? Are you really so old-fashioned that you say that marriage is between one man and one woman? Well, then get ready, because Pride Month starts on Wednesday. And here in our country, we're going to parade our sins around in the streets. Because there's nothing we're more proud of in America than our sin. Are you so old-fashioned that you don't think a woman has a right to choose what she does with her own body? Get ready for that the next few months. Are you really so foolish that, that you base your life on some pipe dream of a, of a magical place called heaven that you're going to go to someday? You really believe that? Right? Better live for life now. You only live once. You go on and on, right? If you hold to the teachings of God's Word, then you are intolerant, and you're old-fashioned, you're immoral, you're wrong. Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we say, really? And then there's all that's going on in your own personal life. Every single one of us has our struggles. Maybe it's struggles about finances causes so many different worries. Maybe it struggles with relationships that can cause us so much pain. Maybe your struggle is with worry yourself. You tell yourself you're not going to worry and that just makes you worry even more. Some of the simplest words in the world to say are Jesus is in control. But some of the hardest words in the world to believe are Jesus is in control. How often don't we go through life anxious and afraid because we doubt that Jesus is really in control and that means we have to face life on our own. That's where you're at today. Then God has the perfect thing for you to hear. Today God opens up heaven and he lets us see into heaven but not to see heaven itself. He lets us see into heaven to see what Jesus really looks like. And it'll surprise you. John writes, I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. He's talking about Jesus. He's saying Jesus. And here's what Jesus looked like. He had eyes like blazing fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he was dressed in a robe dipped in blood. Whenever you find yourself anxious, or afraid. This is the picture of Jesus that God wants you to have in your mind. Jesus the King on his white horse in heaven. I think that's often not the picture of Jesus we have in our minds. Our world tries to convince us that Jesus is old fashioned and irrelevant and weak. That couldn't be further from the truth. Jesus has eyes like blazing fire. Can you picture that? There are some people in life who have the ability that when you look into their eyes, they just fill you with confidence. Isn't that true? That's Jesus. He's got these eyes of blazing fire. And on his head are many crowns. And as I said this, I thought to myself, how can you wear more than one crown at the same time? But Jesus is the King of Kings. How do you get to be the King of Kings? Only by defeating all the other kings, right? And he's got all of their crowns on his head. All of the king's crowns are on Jesus' head. Maybe the most surprising thing is that Jesus is dressed in a robe that's been dipped in blood. Normally kings in those days would wear a, an expensive robe made out of purple cloth. But not Jesus. He's got a robe on that's been dipped in blood. Now, we're used to connecting Jesus with, with blood, right? It was the blood of Jesus shed on the cross that washed away all of our sins. But this blood that's on Jesus' robe, it's not actually Jesus' own blood. Do you know whose blood it is? John, in his vision, sees Jesus fighting against all of his enemies and winning. That blood on Jesus' robe is the blood of all of the enemies whom Jesus has defeated. 
Maybe that's kind of a gruesome picture. But when you see God's people suffer in this world, when it seems like evil always wins, God wants you to know the truth. Jesus, right now, is fighting for his people. And Jesus' enemies never win. This is what Jesus looks like right now. The eyes, the crown, the blood. And here's Jesus' name. It says his name is the Word of God. John, who saw this vision, is the same John who wrote the Gospel of John in the Bible. Do you remember how the Gospel of John starts? It's something that we talk about every year at Christmas. It starts, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is the Word of God. Just, just realize what that means. When somebody mocks God's Word, the Bible, whom are they really mocking? Jesus. When somebody denies any part of God's Word, whom are they really denying? Jesus. Jesus is the Word of God. You cannot separate Jesus from the Word of God, from the Bible. When people say that the Bible is outdated and old-fashioned and wrong, what are they saying about Jesus? He's outdated and old-fashioned and wrong. Jesus is the Word of God. And to drive that home, you've got to check out Jesus' sword. Of course, Jesus the King has a sword. But his sword isn't something that he holds in his hand. Did you hear what his sword is? Out of his mouth comes a sword with which he strikes down the nations and it all fits together. The Word of God, Jesus, what's his weapon? It's the Word of God. There's a sword coming out of Jesus' mouth. It is the Word of God that convinces us of who Jesus is. It's also the Word of God that condemns anyone who doesn't believe in Jesus. It's the Word of God that saves us by putting faith in Jesus in our heart. It's also the Word of God that wages war against the enemies of God. It is the, the Word of God that gives us beautiful promises about Jesus as our Savior. And it's also the the Word of God that issues stern warnings for rejecting Jesus. Because don't think for a moment that an enemy of God will ever escape judgment. It says that Jesus treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. In other words, it's like Jesus is walking around and crushing his enemies like you crush grapes. To get the wine out of them. Don't ever think that an enemy of God is going to make it through unpunished. Just think about it. If you and I, sinful human beings, if we look around at the world and it bothers us, how do you think it makes God feel? If you and I are concerned about sin in our world, we who commit so many sins ourselves, if we're concerned about sin in our world, how do you think our perfect God feels? We have this God of amazing love and perfect, perfect justice. Amazing love in that He was willing to die on the cross to take our sins away. And yet perfect justice that whoever refuses to believe in Jesus, whoever rejects their Savior, is going to find punishment. This is Jesus. He is the King of kings. And the Lord of Lords. That means that if you have put your confidence in Jesus, you will never be put to shame. Don't lose hope because of everything that's happening in the world. Don't think for a second that Jesus is actually going to lose. Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is who Jesus really is. But I bet when you hear all that, it actually makes you a little scared. Does it? If Jesus is really that powerful, if Jesus is really fighting against his enemies, have you taken Jesus seriously in your life? Do you obey Jesus' commands? If not, then this is who you are actually fighting against with your life. You are fighting against the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. 
Perhaps the greatest lie in our world today is the lie, Jesus doesn't judge. You hear that, don't you? All the time. Jesus doesn't judge. What a lie. Jesus is the judge. On judgment day, Jesus is going to come back and he is going to judge the living and the dead. There is already a sword coming out of his mouth and his robes are already stained with blood. Jesus is going to judge the living and the dead. So how can we be saved? Only by the blood of Jesus. Only by the grace of God that this King of Kings and Lord of Lords, He actually came into our world and became one of us and shed His own blood on the cross to pay for our sins, to receive the punishment that we deserve. God wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Through faith in Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Through faith in Jesus, the punishment you deserve is already taken away. This is such a powerful picture of Jesus. For anyone who doesn't believe in Jesus, there is nothing more terrifying than to see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But for you who believe in Jesus, there is nothing in the Bible meant to be more comforting than to see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This is your Savior. Can you see that? We as Christians sometimes put all of these burdens on ourselves. We hear people insulting God, turning away from God, and we feel like it's our job to defend God. Like somehow we Christians, we've got to save God. That's a silly thought, isn't it? That we're going to save God? There was a famous pastor in the 1800s named Charles Spurgeon who liked to ask people, how do you defend a lion? Have you ever heard this before? How do you defend a lion? Imagine that up here in the front of church, I had a big lion in a cage. And all of you, I don't know why, being the mean people that you are, you're making fun of the lion, right? And you're throwing things at the lion. And if I wanted to defend the lion, what would be the best thing for me to do? Let him out of his cage. Right? How do you defend a lion? You let him out of his cage. And that lion can defend himself way better than I ever could. Do you see the point? How do you de defend Jesus? You let him out of his cage. Your friend, the Christian church does not depend on you and me. It doesn't depend on whatever clever arguments or, or fine things we come up with to say. If you want to defend the lion, let him out of his cage. Use God's word. It's not you and I who, who have to do the fighting for the Christian church. It's Jesus who fights for us. It's Jesus who will judge for us. All he does is he gives us this one weapon, right? What's the weapon that Christians have? What's the sword of the Spirit? It's the word of God. Just use the word of God. It's not us who are defending Jesus. It's Jesus who's defending us. Do you think that Jesus is scared of atheists? No way. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Do you think that Jesus is scared of evolution? No way. Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Do you think Jesus is scared of, of any of the new ideas that we see spreading all over the world? Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. This is what makes Ascension Day so special. We get used to seeing Jesus die on the cross. And that was a wonderful thing that Jesus did. He died on the cross to take our sins away. But Jesus isn't dying anymore. Jesus is done dying. Jesus died for us. He rose again. He ascended to heaven. And now Jesus is reigning. Jesus is reigning as the king. This is what gives us peace in our lives in this world. Jesus is the king of kings. And the Lord of Lords. Jesus is in control. It's true. Once had somebody asked me, is it a sin to worry? 
Do you know what I wanted to say back? I wanted to say back, no, because I worry all the time. I worry about the future for my kids. I worry about us Christians and how we're going to handle all of the persecutions that are going to come because of our faith. I worry. How can we not worry? But then you see Jesus riding on this white horse. You see the crowns on his head. You look into his eyes like blazing fire. You see his robe dipped in blood. And you hear his title, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. How could we worry? Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, there is so much in our world that concerns us. It's so easy to say that you're in control. It makes sense when we're sitting here at church. It doesn't make sense when we go about our lives in this world. There seem to be so many reasons that you're not in control of our lives and not in control of what happens around us. Thank you, dear Jesus, for letting John see what you really look like today. Although you died for us on the cross, you're not dying anymore. You're not weak or helpless in any way. You are a mighty king riding on a white horse. You're fighting against your enemies, and you always win. Dear Lord Jesus, give us confidence from your word that you are truly the King of kings and Lord of lords. You're the king of our world. You're the king of our lives. Help us to put our faith and our confidence in you. And one day, Jesus, just like you ascended into heaven, may you come back. May you come back and take us home. In your name we pray. Amen.